It has happened before, this. The memory they try to wipe, to repair, they think, remains as a shadow in some hard to get at place. But they cannot find the thing that is broken in his mind. It is not one thing after all. It is a complex interaction of chemicals, neurological wiring and memory. They are persistent though, impossible to frustrate. They keep at it, infuriatingly patient. He is still lying on the track. It is too dangerous to move in. They swoop in, the little bots, hovering around. They are bright yellow and have smiley faces printed on them, designed to be friendly, non-threatening. He can't even move to knock them away. His arms are lying several feet away where they were thrown, after they were severed by the train. His legs too. He tries snapping at one of the bots with his teeth. He misses. They are too fast for him. There is no pain. The first thing that happened to him after he threw himself onto the track was that the nanobots inside his body flooded him with painkillers. He's surprised he's still conscious. They must have decided it's somehow better for him, medically. The bots are a small part of the huge network of machines that control the world. They are building a giant library of knowledge. It contains all that was ever thought and recorded, and more besides, because these digital minds never stop thinking. They do not sleep. And because they do not sleep, they are insane. He watches the little robots swarm and retrieve his arms. They don't waste any time. It's best to reattach them while the wounds are still fresh. The vessels, the muscle, the sinew, the bone and the nerves are fused together. Eventually they fold back the skin. And before his eyes, the ugly joints disappear. He watches another, as another swarm of bots with smiley faces goes to retrieve his legs. For all their knowledge, they still do not understand how his mind works. They do everything to try to make him happy and keep him from harm. They feed him, clothe him, provide him with shelter, exercise, occupation, entertainment. His rooms are expansive. The walls project beautiful images of the long extinct natural world, and they play him relaxing music, calming noises, rainfall, birdsong, whale song, waves washing on the shore things he has never really experienced for himself. Outside his apartment, there are corridors full of light and a concourse full of trees and plants. Water cascades down the sides of walls and meanders through the foliage in little streams. At night, he can see the bright moon through the glass roof. When he asks, they tell him the names of the stars and any other fact he wants to know. They cure him when he is sick. They mend him when he is broken. He is very old. He has forgotten how many years he has been alive. That is one fact they won't tell him. At some point, he thinks, there may have been others. There may have been friends and lovers. Perhaps there were children. The memory won't quite surface. He tries to grasp at it, but it fogs over. They must have died. If so, he is glad. They were lucky. Now his limbs are reattached. He is being lifted from the train station, carried away back to his apartment. There is a train that runs with large carriages, empty of people, but the train still runs. He wonders when all the other people disappeared and why. There are roads too, and vehicles. He's loaded into the back of one, an ambulance, with more robots to care for him, with the same childish smiling faces. One of them lowers a mask over his face and he falls asleep. He wakes in his bed, it is morning. He looks at his arms, lifts them. They are perfect, untouched. He thinks he must have dreamt about throwing himself under the train. Already the memory is fading. It doesn't seem real. He gets up and showers and eats the breakfast that has been laid out for him. Something to suit his preference, but balanced nutritionally. He spends the day drawing with pen and ink, copying from old books of ancient art. Something he loves to do. He listens to music. He feels very happy. There may have been drugs in the food. Chemicals to alter his mood. He eats lunch goes for a swim in the pool. After dinner, he goes for a walk in the atrium, which is vast and empty. He looks at the stars and asks their names. Then he asks the question, where are all the others? And he gets the response, you were the last one. A thought flickers through his mind, a kind of memory. He heads towards the lifts that take him down, down into the bowels of the building. He walks like a zombie along a long corridor and pushes open a door. He knows what he will see before he sees it, 
an electric spark of memory, flashes of imagery that also flash before him in reality as the lights flicker on and he focuses his eyes. Here are some of the other people, at least their bones, their bodies, not mended, not repaired, because they tried to break the machine, the only crime greater than breaking themselves. He turns away and retraces his steps, shaking, drenched in his own cold sweat. Nothing the Medibots do calms him. Out in the atrium, he walks towards the concourse where the trains depart. He watches them for a while, standing on a bridge overlooking the railway track. Yellow, manically smiling bots swarm about him, anxiously. He climbs up on the wall and lets himself fall.